Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Enemy King 3 And today I'm going to be giving you part 8 of What If Naruto Was sent to a parallel multiverse Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform And also guys Stay in tune for the rest of What If's coming your way over Enemy King Enemy King 2 and Making 3 which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. Yes, you heard that correctly. I need have three channels. And making and making two and making three. So yeah guys, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support and yeah. Without further ado, what is to begin this new episode? Start the intro. So, the last spot we left off, as Naruto and the team got caught up in a fight with Zabuza, who was now an extra missing name. As Zabuza was stronger than Obito, as it seemed like he didn't have his Mongita sharing none yet. As the fight began, Obito was panicking as his students were not ready for something like this. As the two girls screamed when they saw Naruto was hit dead on by Haku. But he pulled himself back up, like some kind of monster. He didn't use his hands or anything, he just rose, like he floated up. He then released so much chakra that it changed the atmosphere, as the place got coated with so much chakra, blowing away Zabuza's mess. Zabuza had to rush to Haku's aid when Naruto almost decapitated her. Zabuza came in wild. As he was able to knock back Obito with his clones, but Obito put in the work as he destroyed all the clones as he moved in to take out Zabuza with Naruto's help because he need right now. The two girls interfere, but they slow down Zabuza just for a moment. While the man was not a strike ninja for nothing, as Naruto broke Zabuza's blade, Zabuza ended up carving his blade in Naruto's chest, using Naruto's blood. And with Naruto's blood, he was able to regrow his blade. But despite the pain and agony that he should be crying in, Naruto smiled and laughed. He went psychotic as he was able to release some of his pent up bloodlust and rage. Sabusa didn't know what hit him as the blonde was so fast, he was like a beast, a monster. As Naruto then released a wind attack, Obita jumped in the free as he released a fire attack. The combination released a hell storm that toasted Sabusa and Haku. As Naruto moved and created two black rods as he drive the black rods into Sabuza and he took Haku's head off as he laughed psychotically before he passed out, his weak body unable to contain. What just happened? He woke up in the hospital as the others were worried. As they wanted to know what happened, he told them that they will speak to the Hokage when they get back, but he gave them a brief summary of not knowing what is happening to him. On their way out, Sahara spoke to Hanabi. As she thanked her for saving her life. As Zabuza was so fast, Sahara would have been cut in half if it wasn't her enemy. But the mission was complete and the group returned back to Kanoha not long after. As they reported to Minato, Minato brought Naruto somewhere as he told Naruto to release the restraints on his power. Minato was shocked when they seal all the place saw Naruto as a bijou as they restrained him. That made no sense. Why would the seal see Sun Chakra as a bijou? Things were just getting more and more complicated as Arkai appeared after a while. As she didn't really have anything new. But she gave him several interesting things to think about. Like if his son was against Kanuka, would he kill him? As Minato told her that he would do what is good for Kanuka. Minma also came back to the village and he heard that Naruto broke his score. As Naruto played the little brother card and just talked to him like he would to any big brother. 
As Min Mo was a bit worried as he told his brother if anything happened, he should come back to him. Min has been busy lately with the missions, and not to mention, he was dealing with a lot of clan politics. The mission that he went on, he went to several different areas to talk to different dignitaries regarding the Uzumaki clan, knowing that he was clan head. As Nurk didn't want to go home yet because he was sure, once he did, Kushina would fuss all over him. But he realized that he was being watched. As Nurka moved and caught the person, once again he felt this strange feeling. It felt so familiar as he wondered who the hell was under that mask. But the person teleported as he vanished. Not just pure speed, he teleported. It was then that Nurka saw Mikoto as she was acting all shady. As she gave a letter to Anvu who moved off towards the tower. Something was definitely going on. Well, he will find out. But the tuned exams are coming up. As he wonder how fun those will be. So yeah guys, so basically that's what I thought you guys can switch across the place to go for yourself. So this will begin this new episode. We begin this episode with Naruto as he sat in a clearing. His eyes were closed as he was meditating. The rumors had spread around that he was able to defeat Zabuza Momokai along with the help of his sensei. The moment he had got home his mother was all over him, fussing, making a fuss, asking if he was alright. As Naruto shook his head, she was being so clean. And not to mention the rest of the clan was asking him questions, asking him if he was okay. And that woman Yoshino, forced him to do full into its lessons. As Naruto really think that one of these days he was just gonna kill her. She was getting on his nerve too much. That old bat, she was so demanding in control of this Naruto before. But lately she knew that they were two different persons entirely. At least Mito was there as well, to stop him from going overboard and doing something stupid that would have blown his cover completely. But the full juice that she was trying to teach him was nothing that he didn't already know. And she told him that next time he was in a dangerous situation, full juice could save his life, although he did survive, so he didn't know what the big deal was. The woman was just annoying. She was old, even by Uzumaki's standards. Why couldn't she just roll over and die already? Luckily, he did not expose himself. As Naruto felt someone watching him, he didn't see anything or move. It has been a month since he defeated Zabuza. Rumors have been spreading, as everyone was surprised by that. But the one thing he always said is, What do you expect? He's the son of the Hokage. As that pissed Naruto off greatly. He was a god, a being above these stupid humans, and yet they compare him to that man. It angered him. But at least he was keeping his anger in check. On their last mission, he almost exploded. It was getting too much. It's been a long, long while since he's seen Katsumi. And he had a good feeling where she is, but he couldn't go there now. He was not strong enough to slaughter anyone that decided to stop him. Because the moment he decided to go down that path, well, things would become a lot clearer that he's against them. But he didn't believe that he could defeat the entire Kanuha right now. His body was still recovering all the power that it once held. This stupid body was just so weak, taking him a long time to recover. Zabuza wouldn't have laid a finger on him if he was in his godly prime. If he was a being standing above him, he would have erased Zabuza the moment he saw him. But now, he got hurt, injured, and his body actually passed out. Stupid, idiotic body. He was snapped from his trail of thoughts. He slammed his fist into the ground. Cracking it. As he took several deep breaths, he was getting agitated. Sooner or later, he could feel that he was going to lose himself. And when that happened, well, he wasn't sure how unscathed Kanuha would be if he was in the village while he did lose himself. For one thing, though, he has been watching his father and Mikato. Something was going on there. He wasn't sure if they were having a, some sort of a fear or something. Or if they were planning something, but they were acting sketchy. As he had been regaining some of his abilities, he was able to spy on them without them even noticing. But for some reason, he felt this raw, seething rage whenever he think of his father, that man, having an affair with Mikoto. As he thought about Kushina, that woman that just kept fussing all over him. He didn't know why this was affecting him, it wasn't like she was his actual mother. But it just brought him so much rage. He felt like he wanted to bash Minotaur Skull in 
and tear. Mikoto's chest right open. But once again he had to keep himself calm and he had to think about Sahara. Sahara has been acting strange. He didn't know if she knew about something that is going on between him and Hanabi, but she's giving him glances every now and then. Him and Hanabi as well. At least they were getting along better than usual. Ever since Hanabi saved her life, she figured that she wasn't that bad in Hanabi. Was trying to calm things down so that she could talk with him more neutral and not have to worry about anyone. Thinking why is she talking with him and not cursing at him. As she really hate when they had to pretend to bite. As Naruto was surprised, the person that was watching him was not the person that he thought. Slowly, as he glanced over to see black hair, he had to admit, although in his time, Orochimaru was a guy, Urkai, without her vest on and her lab coat was something kind of nice to look at, curves in the right places, a sizable chest, and those reptilian eyes that made her look rather good. As Naruto watches Urkai came over, ah, Naruto can she said, her tone slippery and soft, long time no see. As from his memory so far, he hasn't met her while he was here, so perhaps this Naruto knew her. Yes, it has been, hasn't it, said Naruto. Well, given our line of work, we don't really see much of each other, she said. As she stepped closer, I heard about your little endeavor with Zabuza. I'm surprised that you were able to handle an extra missing in, even hold him off until your sensei got there. Most chains wouldn't even live to see a second after, but you, you're quite special, aren't you? It would seem so, said Naruto as she sat down beside him. Hmm, perhaps even more than special, she said. As she gave him a look, well, everyone is special in their own ways. Yes, they are, but you're a different case entirely. And what makes you say that, he asks. You know, not too long ago, Kano has suffered from an abnormal storm. Hmm? What do you mean by that, said Naruto? Well, this weird storm happened. It was late in the night, no one expected it. Right in the heart of Kanoha, violent winds, chakra exploding out from all areas over the village. There had been some damage the next morning. But nothing too fatal, at least no one died. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Yes, it is, she said. As she kept on looking at him, her reptilian eyes just stared at him. As Naruto said nothing, I was one of the few, perhaps the only one to fully take notice of what truly happened that night. And what did you see, said Naruto, if I may ask? Oh, you me, she said. Well, you see, I was rather surprised when I saw Chakra seeping out from a strange hole. I'm confused, said Naruto. So was I, she said. Chakra was just emerging from this strange anomaly. As it poured down and washed over the village, I was unsure what it was because it made absolutely no sense. I mean, what an anomaly to release Chakra upon the elemental nation. I've never heard or seen anything like that before. It was like a chakra weather. Hmm, is that so, said Naruto. Yes, quite intriguing, isn't it? Well, if you say so, said Naruto. I'm not really into that kind of stuff. Yes, it is, she said. As she kept on looking at him, then things started to happen. Things that mainly concern you. Oh, and what would that be? Oh, several things, actually. One, being your change of behavior, you not remembering things, and your new phone abilities and this power, this strange shocker that I saw that night, and it's so similar to what is happening to you now. At first, my theories were that this unknown chakra has invaded you, and you don't know what it is. But then, you won't know what I found. What is that, said Naruto. She reached into her coat as she pulled out a photo and placed it down right beside him. As Naruto glanced towards it, what he saw surprised him, it was him. He was halfway through the wall, literally just going through it. He did say some of his abilities had come back so he could spy on Minato. I saw this. 
you watching your father you completely conceal yourself to the point that no one would see you but the thing is I was also watching your father and I ended up finding you and not just that she placed down several more photographs as it was new to watching several people in the village Mikoto included I mean what are the coincidence after I saw the first one and decided to trail you well not me per se something that not even your senses could pick up on as Naruto said nothing and it seems like it worked I was able to watch you without you even noticing and found these little evidence all around of you doing things that you should not be doing and then you claim that you don't know anything so you can see why it doesn't really make sense to me as Naruto turned a smile on his face this is all interest and all but as he trailed off, she raised her iron, but her throat was grabbed as they were blasted towards the forest. The next thing she knew, she was face first into a rock, her head breaking through it. As Nurt raised his hand, as Chakra formed around it into a spear, as he pointed towards her chest, she slipped her out of his grasp as his hand ripped through the boulder. As she slowly got to her feet, so, I was right, she said. Now tell me, Nurtakan, who exactly or what exactly are you? Because I know that you're not that little boy who I met so long ago. His dream was to become one of the strongest ninjas, to surpass his father and everyone else in the elemental nation. You're definitely not him. Well, I guess there is no point in hiding it, said Naruto. You're right, I'm not this world's Naruto. This world? Yes. Let's just say I'm from another multiverse, if you understand what I mean. The theory of interdimensional traveling. It's real. She said to him. Hmm. I see you're smarter than I thought, said Naruto. Well, considering I used to rip dimensions open. It's real, said Naruto. Used to? Well, let's just say I'm a god. But I'm indeed Naruto, but not this Naruto. And you're right. I came that night and take over this little body that is so pathetic and weak. But now that you know this, I'm gonna have to kill you. Kill me? And why would you do that, she asks. Because you know too much. Can't have you going blabbering my secrets all around. What do you intend to do? Destroy Kanoha? Hmm, I don't know. I mean they haven't done me anything, said Naruto, and they've been pretty nice. So, well, I can't be confined by one village. A god cannot be restrained. In the office, she said. Why didn't Inuichi find anything? Because I made him not find anything, said Naruto. As Urkai then realized that he was surrounded, as there was this white, energy dome that locked the both of them inside. She stepped towards she placed her hand on it. She had to remove her hand instead as the skin burned off. Quite impressive. As her hand healed. But. I must say. I knew that there was something up with you. But I just thought that you were being controlled by someone else. In a way I was right but this was not what I expected. But I don't want to fight you as she raised her hands. But Naruto was gone in a second. As a. Chakra blade dried through her stomach. As he was behind her, she looked down as she spat some blood from her mouth. As Nurta raised his hand, only for her to open her mouth and slip right out of it, as he decapitated the skin that she just stepped out of. You're quite fast. Forcing me to change my body like that, I must say I'm impressed. But indeed, I don't want to fight you instead. I can help you. And why would I need anything from you? I can dissemble mountains with a thought. I can crush nations with a wave of my hand. I can eradicate life with a mere word. Why would I need someone like you? Well, it seems like you're not at your strongest right now. Because your body is not up to it. Judging from your first outburst of chakra, something happened to you, didn't it? Well, 
You are smart as always, Urchimaru. She raised eyebrow, Urchimaru. That's your name from where I was from. There you are a guy, a psychotic, twisted guy, who I ripped apart with my bare hands. Oh, so you killed me? Yes, we weren't really friends, said Naruto. So now I have to do the same thing here. But why? I mean, having me on your side is a gold mine. You don't know much of this world. It seems like you do not contain the memories of the past, Naruto. And even if you do, there are several things that you don't know what is going on, concerning that you have been watching everyone. Oh? So you know what I'm going after? Well, for one thing, your father and that woman you have been watching and keen with. Do you think something is happening there? I don't know. You tell me, said Naruto. Well, I think something is happening as well. There are some secrets that not even your father tells me. He's a rather cagey man if you haven't noticed. Well, given who his teacher was, I know that he's not a cagey man. What do you mean? Danzo, Shaimura. Yes, Danzo. Wait, considering that you guys are the Sonnings, was it Hirzen or Danzo who taught you guys? Hirzen? Oh, you mean Sir Toby Hirzen? He died in a war as well. But he was not a sensei, Danzo was. So you're just as twisted as well, said Naruto. Well, in a sense, I'm worse, she said. Danzo was a rather cryptic man, who would do anything to see Kanoha come out on top. That is why he started the Great Third Shinobi War. What? said Naruto. Many people don't know this. Well, a few does. But he was the one that set things in motion for the Third Great Shinobi War to start. The other nations were growing too strong. He needed to eradicate their shinobis. And he also needed to test one of his powerful subordinates. Let me guess, said Naruto. My father. Exactly. Your father was ready to be a tool of Danzo's. But things changed when he fell in love with your mother. Love. A fickle thing, isn't it? Said Naruto. Yes, it is. I really don't understand it sometimes. What's the point of falling for one being? Well, you're different, said Naruto. So you can't really say anything about that. Yes, you're right, she said. Danzo didn't want your father to go down this path, but he realized that it was necessary. After all, I was a maki, and your father's genes would create some powerful babies that will later on serve Kanoha. But your mother was not the only one that Danzo wanted your father to be with so that the genes of Kanoha could be strong. Things were set in motion that not even I was aware of. But Danzo died. But your father still carried on his goal. He's not as he was before a mindless drone. He has feelings, thoughts. And I'm sure that he somehow finds his heart to love his children. But he's still the same being that Danzo created to make sure that Knoha will always be on top. So it doesn't matter what is in the way. He would make sure to exterminate it. So my father is like one of those roots. Ah, so you know about them as well. Seems that they're here as well, said Naruto. They were from my time. Tell me something. There is this one ninja that has been watching me. Playing mass with gold in here. Do you know who that is? You mean Subject X. What's his real name? I'm afraid I don't know. How do you not? Well, that is one of the few things that your father kept away from me. I don't know who it is. Well, he's somehow, I don't know, but it feels so familiar when he's around me. Like we're almost close, blood, something like that. Are you perhaps saying that he's related to you? Is it Mengma? No, he's not Mengma, said Naruto. He's someone else, but there is also some difference. Tell me, what happened to the Uchiha's? Why were they massacred by Fukaku? Well, you have to know something. Danzo hated the Uchiha's. It came back from the hate from his sensei, Toburama Senju. And that hate was passed down into Minato. Plans were set in motion. The only thing I know was that Fukaku was going to be used as an escape goat. I don't know who or what happened that night. You see, your father doesn't really trust me. Because I've been doing things behind his back, some that he's aware of. He's threatened me several times with death. 
and to exterminate everything about me the moment I step out of line. What about Jiraiya, said Naruto. Oh, he would know everything. You see, him and your father are rather close. After Danzo passed, he became like a mentor for Minato. As Minato was ascending to the Hokage seat, he was there to help him. Jure is just as corrupted as Danzo. He was one of his prized students because he was so empty, a blank slate that he could train to succeed him, but he wanted someone younger to be the Hokage, therefore your father. What about Snavi, said Naruto. She was also told by Danzo what to do, to help bring along the Senju clan. Most of the Senjus die out in the war. Most of them that are wrong are just civilians, not really fighters. So, she was told to be with the white here sage so that they could bring forth a powerful being in this world to help further strengthen Kanoha. But after Danzo's passing, well, her love for her child grew so much that I don't believe that she is the same as before. Jiraiya also loved his daughter as well, but he is still following his own master ideologies. But if it comes to it, she will still do the same as well. Hmm, is that so, said Naruto. Well, this is an interesting piece of information. And you know a lot more, if I were to ask, said Naruto. Oh, I do. As long as you don't try to kill me, we could become friends. And tell me, Urkai, said Naruto as he sat down on a broken branch. What exactly do you want? Oh, that's quite simple. To study everything. To know everything. Every jutsu. To become a being of power, knowledge, immortality that cannot be killed. Well then, you're barking up the right tree, said Naruto. Because I cannot be killed. I am a being of immense power, knowledge, capabilities that would make lesser men's. Not even men, countries, nations, bow. The moment I get back my rightful power, you will see the god that I truly am. Well, from what I've heard, not so long ago you've shown your power to the extent, and I've also saw what you did those black rods, creating them out of thin air. Tell me, I've heard about the knowledge of Sage of Six Path. Perhaps you are somehow related to his power in a sense. Oh, I'm not stronger, said Naruto. Concern that I absorb his mother. His mother? Yes. A being that rival and surpass him in power. It took him days upon days to defeat her along with his brother. And yet, he did not kill her. He could not. He had to seal her away. And now her power, but not just hers. Many, many, many more is inside of me. Urka seemed to be going crazy with this knowledge. And what happened to your own time? Well, I was the worst thing for them. They were the ones that forcefully sent me here, but before I left, I gave them a present. Like what? I brought an end to the human race. All of them, she said, that surprised. Look in her face. I exterminated them down to the last man. Well, if they can survive the moon crashing into the earth, I would be surprised. Her eyes widened in shock. You did what? I told you before, Orkai, said Naruto as he stood behind her, back to back. I am a being of immense power, a god, that could end your life as I see fit, even now with this strength level I am, and I've reached nowhere near my truly godlyhood. So, if you really want to work at my side, there's things I will need, information, and not to mention your help. For what exactly, she asks. The Kayube. I came here not alone, but with someone else. And their power has been stuck in the Kayube, in the Uzumaki Temple. At the moment, I'm too weak. But when I do decide to strike, when I can't take any more, I will need you at my side. But doing this means that we will leave this village. It's gonna try and hold us back. So you have to cut all of your bonds. <laughs> It's brave of you to think that I care about anyone here. The only thing I want is my own research and knowledge to go further. If that means burning everyone in this village down to the ground, I wouldn't give a damn. And given that you're not even from this dimension, you wouldn't care about anyone either. Now would you, she said. Of course not. 
as long as they get what they want. Loving as she turned, she extended her hand. It seems that we have a partnership to work along with. As Nurta gripped her hand, you know, if you betray or go against me, she dropped to the ground as an immense pressure settled on her shoulders. I will reach into your chest and rip out your soul, and I will captivate it and put it through pain that you never experienced in your life before, unending agony for the rest of eternity. She forcefully got back to her feet as sweat running down her brow. Well, same go for me, betray me, and I'll find a way to kill you, she said, in the worst way possible. Oh, Urkai, said Naruto. I cannot be killed, said Naruto. Time skip. Naruto was making his way through the village as he was heading towards his meetup spot with his sensei. He was sure that this was about the tuning exams. He calmly made his way. As he saw there were several individuals entering Kanoha. Not just from the lesser nations, there was also stone ninjas here as well. Kumo ninjas. San was here, that was a given. But the thing that was surprising was the Kiri ninjas. As Naruto did not know what is going on over there, if the civil war is still happening, or perhaps it never did, he will have to ask Urkai about this. She had become a good source of information, and not to mention she hadn't ratted him out yet. But he was confident enough if she tried he could flee this village without getting caught. But yet the thought came onto flame. His mind was second guessing things. Thinking about Kushina. Mito. Why? He shook his head as he kept on walking. It was this stupid body and its feelings. It still cared for them. But once his power returned to its max, he was sure that those would be gone in the wind. As he slowly made his way. As he turned the corner he saw three individuals. Also walking. As he recognized all of them quite perfectly. One of them stopped. Gara. What's the problem? The blonde to his left said. Which was Tamari. And the black hair kid to his right spoke up. What is it? As that was Konku. As Gara stopped as he focused on the blonde. As Naruto stopped as well. Is something wrong Naruto asked. His tone sounded rather amusing. As Timara looked towards him. Hm, he's cute. I wonder if all Kanoha guys are cute as him. Seeing her looking at him Naruto wink. As that made her look away a bit. Do not face his eyes. As Gara stepped forward, as he looked over Naruto, he wasn't saying a word. As Timar and Conqueror looked at each other, unsure what to do. As Naruto examined Gara as well, something seemed off about him. For one thing, he did not look like a psychopath. Well, as Naruto could still feel the bloodlust. But he was coming from his seal. Shikaku seemed afraid and angry at the same time. What are you, said Gara. What am I? What a word question to ask. You step into my village and ask me who I am. You know, I should slap the shit out of you for that. Disrespecting me like that in my own village. But I'm not going to. Hey, don't talk to my brother like that. As Naruto glanced towards Tamari. Yeah. And you better back away before you get hurt, said Konkuro. As Naruto laughed, find this situation amusing. This guy is weird, said Konkuro. Let's go, Gara. This power you have inside of you, it's similar to mine, said Gara as he looked down towards his stomach. As Naruto raised his eyebrow, could Shikaku sense that he also had a piece of him sealed inside him as well? In the form of a jubi. My instincts are to kill you, said Gara. Kill me? Why is your hand shaking, said Naruto. Gara looked though his hand was indeed shaking, Temor and Conqueror were confused. It seemed that Shikaku knew what he was messing with. Hey, if you can hear me, said Naruto. You don't know what you're messing with. It's better if you stay quiet, or I'll come in there and rip you to pieces myself. Gar reached up as he placed the hand right on his head as he seemed to be in pain a bit. I can't, he said. 
As Naruto watched him as he wondered how the hell Shikaku was able to sense. Perhaps it was because he had a piece of Shikaku as well. Well he had the one tails. So that must be the reason but Shikaku could not sense the Jubei. But he must sense a dark feeling coming from him. I don't understand said Gaara. As Gaara backed away. Before he asks, who are you? The name is Naruto. Uzumaki Namikaze. Wait, what? Say Konkuro. You're the Fortikage's kid. Ah, so you know me. You look like him. No, I can see, said Tamari. Well, good look running the family. But you're not too bad yourself, gorgeous. A small blush came in her face, but she said nothing. As Naruto stepped forward, Gar stepped back. Don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you. I don't know what you're sensing, but I can also sense as well. You have Shikaku inside of you, don't you? As Gar looked at him, how do you... We're one in the same Gar, Almost. But, don't just go around, speaking, out in public. You might get hurt, said Naruto. I guess I'll see you at the exam. As he turned and walked away. Tamari, Konkuro, said Gar. Tamari looked towards her younger brother. Most people in their village hate him because of what he had. But she and Conqueror has always been there for him, so they have grown a bond. A bond that cannot be broken. A bond that not even your father could get in between even as much as he wanted to use Gar as his weapon. And they were always here for him and he protected them. Always. But Gar was able to communicate with the beast inside his stomach, which wasn't so bad. Because it helped him most times and protected him. And it also protected them as well. But their father won't use it for a bad. They want to use Gaara as a weapon back at their village. Which Tamar and Conqueror tried to fight against but they were just not strong enough. They really hated their father. What is it Gaara? The both of them said. Stay away from him at all costs. What? Said Conqueror. Come on Gaara that is. Conqueror. As Gaara raised his voice. There is something about him. That scare and frighten Shikaku. At first, Shigoku thought that he was inside of him somehow, but he's not, it's something else, mixed with his own chakra. I'm confused, said Tamari. Shigoku is also confused, but whatever you guys do, stay away from him. Do you understand me, he said. They heard the tone in his voice was a bit pleading. Yeah, yeah, we do. We'll stay away from him. Gara nodded. Let us go, he said. Meanwhile, as Naruto made his way towards this nation. What took you so long? Said Sahara. Sorry, I got held up as he saw Hanabi here as well. He gave her a smile. She smiled back softly. As Sahara noticed that. But she pretended like she did not. As your sensei was already there. Ah, you're all here, he said, a smile in his face. Well, I'm sure that you all know about the upcoming tuning exams. Obito sensei. We all spoke about this before, you were there. Oh yeah, right, he said. But, from your guys' performance so far, I must say I'm impressed, beyond impressed, and that is why I'm here to give you three this. As he handed them three folders. That is all that you need to know about the upcoming tuning exams. I'm confident that you guys can take it, but you guys really need to read those over to understand what you're up against. It's gonna be dangerous, really, really dangerous. So read those over before you accept anything. But I have faith in you guys, okay? Find me when you're done. And let me know what your answer, okay? And with that, he waved goodbye and flashed away. As Hanabi opened the folder and looked inside, there were some documents to read. As she looked it over, as Naruto opened his, as he looked over the documents, same for Sahara, Naruto raised the eyebrow. Well, he shouldn't be surprised given that Danzu had changed up most of the curriculum. After all, the graduation tests would have killed most Jen in his time. But now, they were already strong enough to learn elemental jutsus at the academy. So the tuning exams must be rather dangerous. As a smile came on Naruto's face, it would be fun. As he started to read over several precautions, the first test was a mental test. That was all that it said. Danger, caution, all those words were in there. He breezed over all of that. The second test was survival. 
The third was a brawl mix. Several confusing things they had to do. As Nur to close the folder, what are you doing to Sahara? Well, it's not like I'm not going to take part. Sahara looked at him but you barely read it. Come on, we can do this, said Naruto. We're stronger than we look. After all, we were able to take down Zabuza and Mamakai. Well, you and Sensei mostly did that. But you guys helped, said Naruto. We're a team, we can do this. As he was sure that they wouldn't be able to participate if one of them dropped out. So he had to raise their confidence. Well, if you guys are in, I might as well join so that, even if we lose, we don't have a dead teammate. Sahara sighed. We can protect ourselves as well, you know that, right? Yes, but my eyes are better than yours to see what is going on. You really think that your Byakun are better than my Sharingan? 100%. Come on, girl, this is no time for fighting, said Naruto as he placed a hand on both of their shoulders. Sahara watched as Hanabi did not recall from his touch. She just leaned into it a bit. Alright, fine, said Hanabi. I'm in. Well, if you're going, I'm going as well, said Sahara, as she looked towards Naruto. No, that's my girl, said Naruto that smile. Time skip. I didn't expect you to find me so soon, said Arkai. As Naruto appeared out of the darkness in her lab. It wasn't hard, said Naruto. I want to ask you something about these tuning exams. Is it as dangerous as it seems? Well, Donzo wanted the best of best, so everything with the old days had changed. And yes, it will be dangerous. But for someone like you, it wouldn't be a problem. Remember, you and your sister and the others are trained in elemental affinity from the academy. From what you told me from your past, you guys are a lot stronger here. I'm sure that your sister team will also get invited as well. After all, they've been doing so well. Hmm. I'm glad that you found me. I wanted something from you. And what's that? Oh, it's simple. Your blood. And why do you need my blood? To test it, of course. I believe that your blood contains a lot of things I can do. To add to my various experiments. As Naruto stepped forward, how bad did he say? Hmm. You're more trusting than usual, she said to him. Oh, it's not that, said Naruto. Then what is it? Oh, that's quite simple. I fear nothing. So if you want to use my blood to find something to kill me, by all means try. In the past, in my own time, when I've absorbed the strongest being on my planet, I wanted to see how far my immortality go. And I can assure you, you cannot kill me. But it will be amusing to see what you can create with my blood. Perhaps it will help you in a lot of ways. After all, my blood isn't exactly normal. Well then, I better get to work, she said. Time skip. As Naruto eye was twitching, come on, it wasn't that bad, said Mito. As he wiped his face off, mom is just really cautious. After all, we're going to be taking part in two exams. And it hasn't been that long since we become Jennings, so she should be worried. Although, from what you've done so far, I doubt that you would need that much help. Seems like you got a fair bit stronger than me, said Mito, as she pouted a bit. I've always been stronger, said Naruto, as if she said to him. As Naruto smiled at her. As she smiled back. So, how have things been going, she asks. With Hanabi on your team. Surprisingly, she's nice. Wait, really? Yes. Huh. I guess the two sisters are opposite then because Hinata is a total bitch. As Naruto laughs, it's not funny. I mean, she finds everything to insult us in every way. Always trying to prove that she's the strongest and that she's some sort of leader when Kakashi's not there. So, haven't you put her in her place yet, said Naruto? Well, we haven't had the opportunity to fight yet. But when we do, I'll show her that we're not on the same level. She's just a cocky bitch who thinks that she's the powerless just because of her damn eyes. Like, they will always help her. Huh. Sounds like you're gonna blind her, said Naruto. Oh, nothing like that. As much as I hate her, she's still a Kanoha ninja and she's part of my team. Well, I think that Sakura is planning on killing her one of these days because of the way that she acts. As Naruto laughed once again. Can't we switch teams? 
Ultima please 90 years? As if, Senuto. Come on, do this theme for your sister. Do what's the voice. As Sakura caught up with him as well. Well, he's having a good time on his team. So I have an idea. Why don't we switch Hinata with Hanabi? They're both bitches. What's the point? How about we take Sahara and place the two Hayugas on your team as she looked towards Naruto? I'm sure that you can handle it. What? Are you afraid? You can't handle one girl, said Naruto. Of course I can. It's just... It's just what? You're afraid, said Naruto with a chuckle. You don't know what you're talking about, she said. Well then, buck up and handle it. You know, I'm glad that we're taking part of the student exams. I've heard about your little... Fight with Zabuza Mamakai. I bet that you barely help your sensei. I know that we're taking part, I can show you that I'm still the strongest. Oh, do you really believe that? said Naruto. Of course I do. I mean, something hasn't changed, he said to him. Well then, I'm sure that we'll get a chance to fight, and you can kick my ass. Oh, you think I'm joking, she said. Oh, you see. Come on, guys. You're both Kanoha ninjas. Don't do this. As the group made the way as they arrived to the academy, as Naruto saw there were several areas that he hadn't really focused on, as he could see them from the back some towers, what the hell? He shook it off though, as they met up with the others, making their way. The moment they stepped foot in the building, Naruto felt something off. Something was trying to attack his senses. As Sahara activated her strength and feeling as well. An illusion, she said. As Hinata activated her Byakun, as she scoffed. Did they really think that this would work on me? The group started to walk. There was a genjutsu that would inspire fear in their hearts. But they walked right through it, as this would not weigh them down. That is when they heard chaos up ahead. As Nurt looked at them, it's just a trick, he said. The group narrowed their eyes. Huh. I heard that tune exams are hard, but they're already starting. I'm surprised, said Mitu, as she looked around. Her mother had warned both her and Naruto that tune exams would be difficult. So they need to keep their heads on their shoulders and be focused. Minma had told him the same thing. So it must be dangerous. Even her father had warned them. As she looked around cautiously, that is when a body was violently slammed into the wall. The person had the left part of his face gouged out. His eye was gone. Bite marks were all over him. R run, he said, as he was wearing a Kanoa headband. As Naruto looked down towards him, as he dropped dead, hmm, nice trick, he said. As he looked back up and saw some people, but they didn't look like people. They were weird, marks all over their bodies, their eyes dilated and crazy, foam come from their mouth, blood was clattering all over them. What the hell is this? said Mito. As the boat Byakan users focused on them, as they saw a strange orb at the back. Conjuring this all up, but it looks so real. Is this real? Said Sakura as she clenched her fists. As Sahara looked around, full in Jutsu, she said, as she saw the chakra markings on the wall, the swords going to them. Mito extended that chain as it slammed into one of the people. They're real. Well, said Naruto, full in Jutsu. It's a powerful stuff. Why are you so calm? That's quite simple, said Naruto as he raised his hand towards the incoming people. Blood, thirst look in their eyes. Disappear. An unnatural force went off. As the first phase of the exam, well, the trickery, to see if they were worthy of becoming tunings to get past the first illusion stage was obliterated. The tunings outside were shocked as the force sent them sailing. The windows exploded, the wall crack. A monstrous amount of force decimates the entire area. The hallway was completely destroyed. Once they got back up, what the hell was that? As Naruto calmly walked ahead, Mito's eyes were wide. What, what did you do? Send them flying, I guess, said Naruto. As he laughed at his own joke, the girls were shocked as hell. How the hell did he do that? But this didn't seem like he was about to explain. They finally arrived at the room. 
The door was far enough away so it did not suffer that much. And not to mention there were seals all over as Naruto saw the hallway slowly repairing itself. Self-repairing seals. <laughs> Quite ingenious seals of the Uzumakis. As Naruto raised his feet before he kicked open the door. The door was sent sail as several jennings had to move out of the way as it smashed into the wall. What the hell? One of them got up with an angry, pissed off look in his eyes. He was quite large. Who the hell did that? As Naruto looked up at him, I did. You brat, that almost got me. It should have taken off your head, said Naruto. What was that? You heard me. <laughs> Seems like you punk kid need to learn your lesson as he moved. The girls were still outside as they were still shocked what Naruto just did. Before they could enter though, BAM! Someone broke through the wall as he smashed into the opposite wall. Shocking the girls as Naruto stepped out of the hole. As he walked over towards the guy, who looked up dazed as Naruto pat him on the cheek. Next time, don't attack someone that is far above you. As Naruto got back up, what he said as all of them were looking at him. As Mito sighed, you're already starting problems, she said. As she glanced inside to see everyone glaring at them. Everyone. Because of Naruto's outbursts. But she stepped beside her brother. She was on the face's problem with him head on. As Sahara did the same thing. Hanabi stepped forward as well but he never grabbed her hand. Let them do their... whatever. We'll just watch what is going on. If they get killed, it's not our fault. We don't know that. Perhaps if they get killed, we get disqualified. So I have to be there to save their asses, said Hanabi. Yeah, you're right. They're all so pathetic. <laughs> you guys are really in a dream world, aren't you? Said Sakura. As Kinata turned towards her. Before she could say something, though a voice spoke up. Well, that was something, wasn't it? But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want this next part to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to be posted. Remember share to all of your friends in the social media platform. And also guys, stay tuned for the rest of our tips coming your way over Anime King and Anime King 2 and yes, I need up three channels. So go ahead and check it out and enjoy. And yeah, I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.